Back in the cabin, the flight attendant saw five empty seats next to a gaping hole in row 26 and believed multiple passengers had been lost. A Boeing 737 takes off, a door plug rips away, and a gaping hole shocks 177 people. How did this happen on one of Boeing's brand new shiny jets? Well, stay tuned for a story that uncovers what went wrong and what's next for aviation airline safety and what they're not talking about from this NTSB report on this episode of Taking Off. Hello everyone, Dan Milliken here with Taking Off and today we're tackling a story that's rocked the aviation world. On January 5th, 2024, Alaska Airlines Flight 1282, a Boeing 737 MAX 9, suffered a mid-air nightmare when its door plug panel blew out at 14,830 feet, leaving a hole the size of a fridge on the side of the aircraft. Everyone landed safely, thank goodness, but the National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB's investigation, wrapped up on June 24th, 2025, and they point fingers and they offer fixes. They had 35 findings and 19 recommendations just from this event. What happened here is simply jaw-dropping. Sure, no one died, fortunately, or was even seriously injured. But what the NTSB has uncovered here could lead to huge problems. It could be a ticking time bomb if, if they're not systematically addressed. There's a big lesson here about safety, trust, and the future of flying. So stick with me to the end to hear all about it. And there were other significant safety findings that I, I don't see other media covering from this report, and we'll talk about that. Whether you're a pilot, a traveler, or just someone who's ever buckled up on a plane, this one's for you. All right, let's set the scene. It's a chilly evening in Portland, Oregon, and Alaska Airlines Flight 1282 is climbing out, just having taken off, headed to Ontario, California, with 171 passengers and six crew. There are people on business trips, on vacations, or heading home. And barely six minutes after takeoff, at almost 15,000 feet, a loud bang rocks the cabin. A door plug panel covering an unused emergency exit rips off, creating a roaring vacuum as the pressure equalizes and it sucks out phones, a child's shirt, and even threatens to pull an infant from a mother's arms, per the NTSB reports. Seven passengers and one flight attendant suffered minor injuries. Now, it isn't like the movies where you hang on for dear life for what seems like forever. As soon as the pressure equalizes seconds, there's no more sucking out the hole that's happening. On this flight, there were only seven seats unoccupied, but fortunately, two of them were the ones closest to the door plug. Now, this was not a door that blew out, it was a door plug. On airliners, different carriers can order the planes in various cabin configurations. Maybe they have multiple classes with uh, cabin separation, or maybe they just have one single class of cabin. There are FAA requirements on how fast a fully loaded plane can be evacuated. So depending on the layout, they might need more doors. So the manufacturers in the design and the building of the aircraft will have multiple places that doors could go if they were needed. If not, a door plug is put in that place. The cabin is pressurized so that a greater concentration of oxygen is available for the people on board the plane. As it climbs in altitude, the outside pressure decreases and inside is a higher pressure than outside. In this case, with the, the pressure pushing out, the door plug exited the fuselage in a explosive decompression. Oxygen masks drop, passengers brace, but the pilots, calm as you can ever hope, they land the plane safely back in Portland. When the decompression happens, they don quick uh, masks for the pilots. But the pilots, calm as you could ever hope, don their masks, they land the plane safely back in Portland. But the pilots did have some problems with something in the cockpit, which you will get to in a moment. The challenge for the NTSB? Well, figure out how a brand new Boeing 737 MAX 9 delivered just months earlier 
could fail so dramatically and make sure that it never happens again or anything else that could lead to catastrophic failure. The NTSB's investigation finalized on June 24th, 2025 is a quest to restore trust in one of aviation's biggest names, Boeing, and to keep the skies safe for everyone who flies. The NTSB's finding lay out a string of hurdles and Boeing's taking the heat. First, the door plug itself. It's a heavy panel secured by bolts and fittings and is meant to be as solid as the plane's skin. But the NTSB found it was delivered from Spirit Aero Systems, no relation to Spirit Airlines, and they're a key Boeing supplier previously owned by Boeing with missing bolts. That's right, four critical bolts meant to lock the plug in place weren't even there. It's, it's like driving a car with the lug nuts missing and only maybe a couple of plastic retainers keeping the wheel on. One bad bump and you're in trouble. The report says workers at Boeing's Renton, Washington factory failed to catch this during the assembly of the plane. And the paperwork was a mess, leaving gaps in who checked what. And the really maddening piece of information, the plug had actually been removed, which would normally require a removal form that's written up so it could be checked when it was put back in and supposed to be put back in by workers trained for that job. But no paperwork was generated, no checks were made, and the workers who were on duty at that moment did not have any experience in removing or reinstalling door plugs. In interviews, the team said they had no knowledge of who opened it and who put it back in. They said, we don't know who did it. Only door team personnel were allowed to perform this work, but none were on duty at the time that it was removed and reinstalled. And since whoever did it didn't make any paperwork, no one knew to inspect it. This systemic culture can lead to bigger and more significant failures if Boeing doesn't get this fixed. The NTSB also called Boeing's safety program immature. Now, I'm not sure what the official red tape speak that that translates to, but I can only imagine. Boeing's relatively new CEO, Kelly Ortberg, who took the job around the time this particular plane was delivered, was singled out by NTSB Chair Jennifer Homendy for actually improving safety since taking over, but she stresses that more needs to be done. Boeing is not getting the only finger point of blame in this. There's the oversight. The FAA, which regulates Boeing, was supposed to ensure quality control, but the NTSB called their monitoring inadequate, and that's bureaucratic for uh, it means it sucked. Inspectors didn't have the access or training to spot issues, and Boeing's own quality checks were more about checking boxes than actually catching flaws. NPR noted a culture problem at Boeing with pressure to churn out planes faster than a baggage claim on a holiday weekend. Post on X echoed this saying, Boeing's process has a hole bigger than the door plug. The 737 MAX program already under massive scrutiny after two fatal crashes in 2018 and 2019 faced renewed distrust. Passengers started asking, is my plane safe? A question, a fair question that no one should have to ask. The industry faced its own obstacles. Alaska Airlines grounded its 65 MAX 9s, and the FAA halted all 171 U.S. registered MAX 9s for inspections, disrupting flights for weeks. Other airlines like United found loose bolts on their MAX 9s per Reuters, showing the problem wasn't just one plane. Boeing's stock took a hit, and regulators worldwide from Europe to China tightened scrutiny. The bigger hurdle? Rebuilding trust. Boeing's not just making planes, they're carrying millions of people with dreams, vacations, livelihoods. One misstep ripples across the globe. And here's a couple of the findings I think that are important that are not being talked about. First, the NTSB is pushing for cockpit voice recorders to have a 25-hour loop. When the NTSB in this investigation pulled the CVR, the critical section was overwritten. The CVR records for two hours in a loop before being overwritten. And in today's technology, I just don't get that. 
I left this $60 Sony recorder, audio recorder, on a helicopter when we did a video on a short flight. I forgot about it, and when I got back to the helicopter the next day, 18 hours later, it was still recording. With the current short window of recording loop on airliners, I know of several situations where pilots allegedly let things play out so that the critical moment that might get the finger of blame pointed back at them was overwritten, like that JFK runway incursion last year. We'll never know what was going on in that cockpit when the airliner pulled in front of another one on the runway when that other one was on a takeoff roll. While disaster was averted that time due to quick thinking ATC, the crew was able to continue their flight overriding all that audio. Hey, if it were me on that flight deck, maybe I'd be real glad for only a two hour recording loop. One other note on CVR recordings, Airlines traditionally can't just go in and grab the CVR recordings. Investigators can when there's a good reason. Airlines aren't spying on their pilots with the CVR. That's not what it was made for. But let me be clear. In this event of the door plug blowing out, the pilots, the flight crew were heroes who acted decisively, which led to this positive outcome. NTSB Chair Hammondy said that the heroic actions of the crew ensured that everyone survived. And I just wanted to make sure that you knew that. More findings not talked about. It was pointed out that the teamwork, the efficiency, and decision making by the pilot and the flight crew led to the positive outcome. Also, the NTSB in finding number seven says this reinforces the necessity of minimum two pilots. In a world of automation and getting more automated all the time, pilot staffing issues with calls for single pilots or even no pilots, the NTSB says this incident shows how important a two pilot crew is. Another finding that hasn't been talked about was the communication between the flight crew. After the immediate descent to below 10,000 feet and the removal of the oxygen mask by the pilots, the crew did not perform the procedure to switch their communications back to their headsets, which in this event ended up being really a non-factor, but the NTSB thought it important enough to put it in the report. It's little things like these that can and should change training that maybe eliminate some holes in that Swiss cheese of accidents down the road. Lessons we can learn that didn't have to be written in blood. And also the NTSB added a couple of findings dealing with the FAA not mandating child restraints for children under two. All right, here's the turning point, the 19 recommendations. The NTSB's June report didn't just point fingers, it laid out a roadmap to fix the mess. They slammed Boeing for systemic quality control issues and Spirit Aerosystems for shoddy manufacturing. But the game changer? Clear recommendations to get things right. Over and over again in these 19 recommendations, the NTSB called for Boeing to overhaul its quality assurance, more inspections, better training, and real-time tracking of parts. The NTSB is putting pressure on the FAA, recommending more on-site oversight and more thorough audits. The FAA has made a statement about this that says, that it has fundamentally changed how it oversees Boeing since the Alaska Airlines door plug accident. And we will continue this aggressive oversight to ensure Boeing fixes its systemic production quality issue. And we will continue this aggressive oversight to ensure Boeing fixes its systemic production quality issues. We are actively monitoring Boeing's performance and meet weekly with the company to review its progress and any challenges it's facing in implementing necessary changes. All right, this isn't just about one door plug. It's about making sure that every bolt, rivet, and panel is perfect for our safety. And while the NTSB's recommendations aren't mandatory, this incident is forcing Boeing and the FAA and the industry to rethink how planes are built, keeping you safer next time you board. Boeing's response is the pivot. They've already started inspections, they've been retraining workers and pausing production lines to fix the gaps. 
But can Ortberg change the whole Boeing culture? It's a huge lift for him to do. So where does all this leave us? Well, Alaska Flight 1282 was a wake-up call. No one died, but it exposed cracks in Boeing's process that could have been catastrophic. The NTSB is right to put Boeing and the FAA on the hook. Missing bolts, sloppy records, and rushed production aren't acceptable. But here's the bigger picture. Competition in aviation, like Boeing versus Airbus versus Embraer, it drives innovation. Think better fuel efficiency, comfier cabins, cheaper tickets. Without a strong Boeing, Airbus could just jack up all the prices and we'd all pay more. A healthy Boeing isn't just good for the U.S. economy, supporting 150,000 jobs and billions in exports. It's vital for an industry that connects the world. So while a lot of hate has been recently directed at Boeing, and rightfully so, I'm actually pulling for them that the leadership can get this culture turned around at such a large corporation. What can Boeing do to come back stronger? Well, first, double down on quality. Hire more inspectors, train workers better, and track every part like it's a passenger's luggage. It means they have to move away from the short-term focus on quarterly profit reports to satisfy shareholders. They have to think more long-term. You know, the old Herb Kelleher Southwest, you, you know, look after your employees, look after your customers, and the revenue will come. A systemic problem will require a systemic solution. Second, rebuild trust with transparency. Share fixes openly, not just with regulators. And third, slow down production to get it right, even if it costs short-term profits. For the FAA, there's some really good recommendations the NTSB has for them on improving oversight at the large manufacturers. I hope they will implement these. The NTSB's plan is clear. Boeing and the FAA just need to do it. For me, this story has taught a lesson I'll carry as a pilot and a person. Accountability starts with owning your mistakes. In life, admitting a slip up and fixing it builds trust, whether it's a plane or a promise. For all of us, this means demanding excellence from companies like Boeing and organizations like the FAA while rooting for their comeback. The skies need them and so do we. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive into the Alaska Airlines scare. I hope it gave you insight into what keeps our skies safe. A quick nod to two sponsors who make these stories possible. First, Flying Eyes Optics. Their sunglasses and regular glasses have such thin frames that fit perfectly under helmets and headsets. Great for pilots or sunny days. It leads to less pain and fatigue. So visit flyingeyesoptics.com. Use my code, taking off all caps, one word, for 10% off. Also, check out Clemens Insurance at clemensinsurance.net. They saved me over a thousand bucks by digging for the best rates. Whether for your plane, your car, or home, they can help you. And if this story got you thinking, click the box right here for one of our recent reports. Until next time, superior judgment trumps superior skill. Take care.